Date unknown. Dearest Anne, I fear this will be my final entry. All my men are gone, dead or missing. I no longer even know what day it is or if your eyes will ever see this journal. These woods are a maze, and I fear that whatever has been stalking us these past days will soon take me as well. Farewell, my love. Your time is not up, soldier. I have need of you yet. Mister? Are you okay, mister? Oh. You don't look so good. I better take you back to Grandma's house. She'll know what to do. Come on, mister, you can make it. It ain't that far. Follow her. Go. done this time. You better get you inside. Fetch me some fresh water from the well, Robin, and some rags. This man is hurt bad. Now don't you worry. The Lord has put you in my hands and I'll take good care of you. Damn those dark woods. Mister? Where am I? Shh. You rest now. I'll take care of you. sleeping.
away, the child is mine. I gotta go now, mister. The lady from the woods is calling me. But my grandma will take care of you, so don't you worry. You must hurry now. She's in great danger. Hurry! She needs you. No. Where is she? Hush. Now don't strain yourself. You're going to be all right now. The fever is down and your wound is healing up nice enough. We were plenty worried, though. You were nearly gone when Robin brought you here. Where am I? This is my home. My farm, just outside Burkittsville, Maryland. The little girl. Oh, Robin. My granddaughter, my precious child. I should thank her. She saved my life. She's gone missing. <laughs> what? Where? The woods have got her now. She came to me in a dream. She told me she was going somewhere. Sounds like the woods are calling you too. Just as well, because I need you to go there soon enough. First things first, though. I'm Bess Weaver. You're lucky Robin found you when she did. I helped tend to the injured during the war, and I learned a thing or two about treating a wounded man. That's a nasty shot you got across the side of your head. How did you get it? I... I, I don't remember. I can't remember much of anything, to tell you the truth. I... I don't even know who I am. No wonder, with a wound like that. Well... We'll just have to call you something, I suppose. I can't just have you wandering around like the living dead. Well, that's it. You walked out of the woods like a dead man reborn, just like that fella from the Bible. Lazarus, his name was. It fits you, at least until we can figure out your real name. Lazarus. Good a name as any, I guess. I remember... Being a soldier, men were dying all around me, and I... Hush, hush now. You're just going to make things worse for yourself. Now you just lay back down. No. I, I think I'm well enough to get up now. I never was one for lying about. Uh, at least I don't think I was. My uniform. What happened to it? I had to burn it. It was caked with dirt and blood. But I had something for you to put on. These belong to my son, Jimmy, and I don't reckon he'll be needing them. That's kind of you, ma'am. But why do you say your son won't be needing them? Good Lord took him home. Been five years now. Doctor said it was the pox, but not me. I've seen pox before. I think it was those damn woods that killed my son. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. You've been good to me, taking me in and doctoring me up, but it don't feel right, wearing your boy's clothes. You can keep the clothes. Like I said, Jimmy doesn't have any use for them now, but I'm going to ask you for something in return. I'll do anything I can, ma'am. Those damn woods have my Robin, my precious baby. They're going to try to take her away from me just like they took my Jimmy. I need you to get her back. The woods? What are you talking about? You've been out for three days now. Yesterday morning, while I was tending to your wounds, Robin disappeared. The girl's always been headstrong, just too damn stubborn. She said she was going to play in the woods, and I told her not to. But after I finished tending to you, she was gone. I knew where she went, and I knew something bad was happening. Those woods have always called to her, and now they've got her. It's... I I'm sure she's okay. No, she's not. I got the neighbor folk to send for help, and they searched the woods around the house until nightfall, but no one found a trace of her. Parson Vance put together a search party to go look for her today. But those woods are too smart for them. They'll never find her. You're the only one who can find her. You made it out of those woods. The good Lord delivered you to us to protect my baby. I just know it. Ma'am, 
I can stand on my own two feet again, and for that I thank you. But I'm not in any shape to help anyone right now. But you have to. Those townsfolk don't know the woods like I do. They can't fight what's out there. But you're different. You have the power to bring back my little girl. I can see it in your eyes. Woods are just trees. If that little girl is out there, I'm sure the people of this town can find her. You're wrong. Those people are going to their deaths. And don't ask me how, I just know it. You're the only one who can save her. I brought you back from the gates of death, Mr. Lazarus, and you're in my debt now. I need you to repay me by finding my little Robin. All right, ma'am. Bess, I'll do what I can. Oh, thank you. I... she needs you. I don't know if it'll help, but there's a pistol in the drawer of that wardrobe. Jimmy bought it brand new from the coal company back in 81, just before he died. There's some bullets in there, too. Jimmy collected guns. Never fired him much, but he did love to have them. If you'd like, you can practice out back while I make you something to eat. I imagine you're hungry after so many days without a meal. No... Actually, I'm not. I know I should be, but I'm not. Let me make you something anyway. You're going to need your strength. Rummage around the house if you like, and take what you need. You're welcome to whatever you find, if it'll help you find Robin. I need you to tell me what you know about the woods. They're evil. That's all I can say. Some nights, I sit out on the porch and I swear the trees themselves are watching me. Other times, I hear sounds, like Robin playing when I know she's asleep, or the sounds of people throwing rocks. That's the worst. As if the trees are trying to trick you into going out there. Why don't you go out back and try out Jimmy's guns? They haven't been fired in a while, and you really ought to get a feel for them. Jimmy had him a nice little firing range on the back fence. Just some cans and things, but at least something to shoot at and test the sights. What about Robin? Why didn't you stop her? Oh, you can't stop that girl from anything once she puts her mind to it. She goes where she wants, and those woods seem to talk to her like she speaks their language. But now, they've finally taken her, tricked her, and I need you to go find her. Talking ain't going to do us a damn bit of good now. You need to get yourself ready and go find her.
October 23rd, 1863. Dearest Anne, my orders finally came in after sitting in that damnable hospital in Washington, D.C. ever since Gettysburg. They're sending me to a supply unit in central Maryland where I expect to see mercifully little fighting. It will be a nice change of pace overseeing supplies of shoes and uniforms after all the fighting I've seen this year. My new commanding officer is a Major Thomas Belling, who is reported to be a very good man. The countryside here is beautiful, though the leaves have already fallen from the trees in anticipation of a long, harsh winter. I've stopped near a local farm to take in the brisk autumn air and write this entry. I intend to keep this journal during my stay here and send it off to you when I have filled it. At the rate I've been writing in it, I suspect I will be sending it off to you very soon. I miss you terribly and cannot wait for this savage war to end so that I can return and finally marry you as I promised so long ago. He must have been trying to steal food. Had better report this in town. remembering something. I could remember being a soldier. I remember... I, I don't know. I, it's all so fuzzy. Maybe you should come in and lie down for a minute. Thank you. I, I think I'll be fine now. I want to get going as soon as possible and find your granddaughter. I don't know why, but somehow I think she's the key to recovering my memory. There's a young fellow in town named Peter Durant. 
He runs the Burkittsville Historical Society, and he can tell you anything you need to know about the local area. It's at the edge of town. If you follow the road from the farm, you'll pass right by it. But that's also where the search party is meeting. I think you should stay away from them. If they're looking for Robin, why shouldn't I just go with them? I told you! Those men, their hearts are in the right place, but they're heading to their deaths. I don't know why, but I feel it right down to my bones. You mind what I'm saying. If you go with those men, you'll be going to meet your death, too. All right. I can move faster on my own anyway. I'll start with this Peter Durant character. Anything else you want to tell me? I made you some victuals, but I think it's better if you just take them with you. I'll go get them, and then you need to get going. way to town. God speed to you, Lazarus. I'll pray that you find my Robin and bring her back to me safely. I'll do whatever I can to make sure that she's returned to you.
this him? Afternoon. You the gentleman staying out at the Weaver place? I'm Peter Durant. We heard you might be coming to town. You feeling better? Much better. Thanks. So this is the man everyone's been talking about. I figure he might be a good place to start, being a stranger Gentlemen, and all. let's be a little more accommodating. This man is a guest of Mrs. Weaver, and we should show him the same respect that she does. Well, maybe it'd be a good idea for Mr. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I didn't mention it, but you can call me Lazarus. Well, uh, as I was saying, maybe it'd be a good idea for Mr. Lazarus to join us in the search. We know these woods better than anybody, and there's no sense having two people lost out there. Yeah, we'll know right where you are when we have to come find you. I appreciate your concern, gentlemen. I didn't have anything to do with Robin's disappearance, and I want to find her just as much as you do. I made Mrs. Weaver a promise that I would. Thanks for the offer, but I'm going to look for her by myself. Mr. Lazarus, I'm Parson Vance. I take care of the spiritual needs of this town. When all this unpleasantness is over, I'd like to meet with you and tell you about our church. Oh, oh. Hmm, you don't look so good, mister. Why don't you come in and sit down? Uh, you boys go ahead and start the search. I'll take care of Mr. Lazarus and send him along when he's ready. All right, Peter. Come on, boys. I want to get out there before dark. I don't want that poor little girl to have to spend another night out there. Listen, friend, don't mind what the men are saying. Tensions are running a little high around here since Robin disappeared. Well, there's always been talk of the woods being haunted. Robin disappearing just brought all those legends back to the surface. There's even a legend about a witch out there. <laughs> but even a silly superstition can add fuel to the fire. Oh, oh my. You don't look so good. I'll be fine. I just need a minute. A minute to... October 24th, 1863. Dearest Anne, I encountered a rebel forager yesterday, which was quite a shock being so far behind the banks of the Potomac. I'm sorry to say that the man opened fire upon me, and it was my duty to kill him. I have arrived in the town of Burkittsville, Maryland, which is where my company is currently quartered. I have not yet met my new commanding officer, as he is a busy man, but I am waiting to report to him now, which has given me a moment to jot down these words. Come in, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Robert McNichol, reporting as ordered, sir. Sit down, soldier. I understand you ran across a Confederate soldier yesterday outside of town. Yes, sir. He was foraging for food. Yes, I've gotten quite a few reports of rebel foragers from farms all over the county. The enemy sends in small teams like this from time to time to find food and supplies and disrupt our communications whenever possible. I believe there's a small unit of maybe eight to ten men operating out of the woods, not far from town. That way they can conceal their movement and gather up the supplies they've been stealing before heading back for Virginia. If you know where they are, why don't you just send a unit in after them? That's why I need you, Lieutenant. Now I'm sorry to have to do this to you so soon after your arrival, but you're the only combat experienced officer I have right now. And we've got to put an end to these raids. With all respect, sir, I was hoping to get a break from combat out here. My unit was wiped out at Gettysburg, and I... I'm well aware of your record, Lieutenant. Listen, I get all kinds of troops assigned here. From down-home farm boys who don't know which end of a rifle to point at the enemy, to men who've seen way too much of the horror of war, like yourself. 
but I have to do the best I can with what I've got. Washington just can't afford to send any troops out here to track down a single rebel foraging unit, so we have to take care of them ourselves. And you're the only officer I have right now who isn't a green volunteer or useless at commanding men. I know, sir, but it... But nothing. I've seen your record, and you know how to lead men. Right now, I need a man like you, and I am giving you a direct order to take a small group and find those rebels. Now, Lieutenant, are you going to refuse this order? No, sir. You can count on me. When do I leave? Immediately. I've taken the liberty of selecting some men for you. They're waiting for you outside. They're good men, Lieutenant. Two of them combat veterans, and a third local man who's been stationed here about a year. Mosley's his name, and he should be able to tell you a bit about the local terrain. Your orders are to take your men and head toward the forest along the main road, crossing in when you meet Tappy Creek East. Find the rebels, report their strength, and avoid direct engagements if you're outnumbered. Otherwise, use your own discretion in confronting and eliminating any raiders you encounter. Any questions, Lieutenant? Can you tell me about my men, sir? Corporal William Newhouse is the ranking enlisted man, and the one with the greatest experience. He's a good shot, and an accomplished woodsman from Wisconsin. His unit was decimated at Chickamauga a few weeks back, so he hasn't been here long. Private Moore is a veteran of Gettysburg, like you. But he was with an artillery battery that arrived the last day of the battle, and didn't see much action. His unit was transferred a few weeks ago to fight out west with Grant, but somehow he got himself transferred here. He's got an uncanny sense of self-preservation that might come in handy. The final man, mostly, as I said, has been stationed here for about a year. No combat record, but he knows the local area, and should be able to help you get to know the lay of the land. What if I get into a real fight out there? I don't want any dead heroes. If you find a man or two on his own, like you did today, Attempt to capture him, but don't endanger your men. By all accounts, the rebels are irregulars on foot. But on the off chance there's a whole company of cavalry out there, I want you to get back here and report it to me. Can you tell me anything else, sir? That's all the information I have right now. All right, then. Your men are waiting for you outside. Take what supplies you need, but I want you out on that road within the hour. You the new lieutenant they assigned us? I'm Lieutenant McNichol of Syracuse, New York. I've been assigned as your commanding officer. I'm Private Mosley, sir. I'm originally from Rockville, but I was assigned here. I'm Private Moore, sir, but you can call me Skunk. They call me that because I can sniff out trouble from a mile away. I always thought it was because you stink. And you are? Corporal Newhouse. I was with the 15th Wisconsin at Chickamauga a few weeks back. Then they pulled those of us who survived that battle back here. Born in Ohio. Moved to Wisconsin to try my hand at mining. And where are you from, Private Moore? I'm from Pennsylvania, sir. Philadelphia. Well, gentlemen, it seems that a band of rebels are operating out of the woods nearby, and they need us to root them out. Our orders are to track them down and capture them if we can, or shoot them if we can't. Gather up your field kits and meet back here in one hour to move out. Private Moore? Call me Skunk, sir. Private Skunk, see if you can arrange for us to acquire some dried beef and fresh vegetables to take with us. I don't intend on eating beans and hard bread tonight. Yes, sir. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Lazarus, are you okay? Are you okay? Thought I was gonna lose you for a moment there. I'm sorry. I think I was just caught up in a memory. Well, like I was telling you, the townsfolk of Burkittsville are prone to getting caught up in the hysteria of the local legends. Now, what's your involvement with the Weavers, if you don't mind my asking? Mrs. Weaver took me in. I was hurt and I needed help. She asked me to find Robin in return. She seems to think I'm the only one that can find her. Curious woman, that Mrs. Weaver. She's convinced that the search party is doomed. She put the fear of God in me. Yeah, she has that effect on people. Her whole family seems to be aware of things the rest of us aren't. 
Even little Robin seems to have some sort of unnatural affinity for those woods. Her son was like that, too, before he died, and they say her mother was even more attuned to the spirits, but I didn't know her. Died in childbirth, I believe. I think they're just folks who are good at telling stories and amusing people around the campfire. Where do you think the little girl is? That girl is a bit rambunctious, and no doubt she's having a grand adventure out there. <laughs>